already got in a part to 3D scan, but it is one of the most complicated things that I've scanned in quite some time. Let's talk about some things that make 3D scanning complicated, specifically for structured light 3D scanners like the Artec EVA. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be talking a lot more about 3D scanning. So if you like that kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. I've got here my Artec Even. I've got a part from a friend of the show, Trevor over at TG Creative. He sent over a 90s Trailblazer AC vent, and he takes these and ends up making gauge pod mounts for them. But there's a finite amount of these left in the world. Chevy's not making them anymore, and well, it's not the 90s. And this part is really complicated for scanners like the EVA. The EVA is a structured light 3D scanner, and you might look at this and say, it looks kind of gray and weird to me. And that's because I've used the poor man scanning spray, otherwise known as dry shampoo. This is orange mango and smells quite lovely. It's also way cheaper than something like a sub. I would love to do a comparison with a sub to dry shampoo. If anyone has contacts at a sub, let's get talking because a sub is like 30 bucks a can. This is definitely not. And I'd like to see the differences between them. I'm told a sub is a lot better, but I don't have a ton of experience with it. There is a whole nother bit of this video. This is the second time I've recorded it because I've been riding the struggle bus with this part for the better part of two hours now. And a lot of it came down to, I was using a crappy turntable. We're gonna talk about that toward the end of the video, but I wanna talk about the part itself. This part embodies basically everything that sucks about high-end 3D printing. This part is black. It's got very small detail and it does not have a flat surface on it. And the client also needs all sides scanned. So what I've done here is I've removed it from its turntable. The turntable itself was a cheap one that I got from Amazon. I would link to it, but it's honestly hot garbage. And it's got a bunch of triangles on it. That is really, really bad for scanning. I've struggled so much with this. Entire version of that video will be on Patreon. We're gonna effectively just upload the raw clips for you guys there. But the part itself is also black. And the EVA is a structured light scanner, similar to the CR Scan Lizard, the CR Scan 01, and a lot of the other kind of more affordable 3D scanners out there. Revo Point has the Pop and the Pop 2. Those are both structured light. And most recently, the Pop Mini, which is blue light, and I might have one of those on order. Blue light would actually do a very good job on this because blue light scanners don't care about color. They don't care about reflectivity. Structured light, however, does. I'm still kind of breaking one big rule with handheld scanners that are not designed for this. Turntables with handheld scanners that don't have turntable mode can be a metric pain in the ass. And we're gonna show you the process of what this looks like, good, bad, or ugly. Because this part kind of embodies everything that this scanner is bad at. So let's try it. I was supposed to have another scanner to put up against this. Uh, I might've bought another scanner. Unfortunately, that's sometimes what happens when you buy from eBay, it came broken. So it is on its way back for repair. So is what it is. This is what we got. So we're gonna run what we brung. This is the Artec EVA for those that haven't followed. I unboxed these, I reviewed it. I looked at this scanner a couple of times on the channel, we'll cart that playlist so you guys can take a look at it. But this scanner runs about 20,000 US dollars and is capable of detail down to 0.1 millimeter while capturing both texture and geometric detail. Now, I've never had the scanner get down to 0.1. It, honestly, I run somewhere in the 0.3 to 0.6 range when I'm getting a good scan, and that is not great for its price point. That's why we wanna dig into these 3D scanners out there. Am I an idiot? Don't answer that question. Am I doing something wrong? Maybe. Have I just downloaded Artec Studio 17 and I'm using it for the first time on camera? Yes, but we're gonna learn together. This is part of this series all about 3D scanning because I firmly believe that manufacturers are lying to us and nobody out there has tested. So I'm making a call out to all 3D scanning manufacturers. I wanna review your scanners and I wanna pit them up against each other. Put your money where your mouth is. Just like I'm gonna put my money into our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. 
yeah, I'm still self-sponsoring these videos. We can move past this. Remember, we at 3D Musketeers are now offering high-end 3D scanning, and while some parts absolutely suck and might actually result in failure, we will consult with you before this happens. I was just asked if I could scan something and it showed up in a box. That was as far as I went with that, and I asked if I could make it in a video, and that's the only reason I agreed to do this. So, if you want to get something 3D scanned, remember, you can reach out to the pros at 3D Musketeers. Links will be in that description down below. But we understand that sometimes renting scanners of this caliber is not really in a lot of people's budgets. That's why we have a Patreon where you can kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund every month. Remember, it's the first week of the month. And, well, that means it's very simple to support those creators that you like the most. It helps us be able to do more cool stuff like this and not charge an arm and a leg. And oh yeah, by the way, we're going to have a public mailing address soon. And if you do want to send us stuff to scan, email me first. We'll verify if we can scan it. And if we can, we'll make it part of a video, which might be a lot of fun. And uh, maybe it's in the description. I don't know if I've gotten it all set up yet. So if it is, cool. If it's not, I don't know soon TM. But we do appreciate, even if you can't spend a couple of bucks, totally understand. A like and subscribe and a share goes a long way to helping the channel grow. Anyways, let's... Do the thing. I got the Eva here. It's stickered. Look, Victoria's on it. Yes, I put my cat stickers on this. It's called branding. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start this scan here. And by the way, for those that are in our Discord, you guys are actually watching this live via Google Meet. So thanks. Remember, Patreon and all that stuff. So we're gonna start the scan here. I am just kind of checking for distance. So you're gonna see me looking a lot at my laptop screen, which is over here, and I'm checking it to make sure that everything is correct. The scanner knows distance. It can detect distance. And that's what I'm currently doing is figuring out where does my distance need to be? And then I'm gonna hit the button and start scanning. Now, again, like we talked about, this scanner does not really do turntable mode. It's not supposed to, at least. We should be able to get somewhat decent geometry out of it by going very, very slow. Actually, this is looking pretty darn good. Now, for those wondering, unfortunately, this scanner does not capture surfaces and solids, so it will not make a step file that does actually require pretty hardcore software like Geomagix or Design X. Software that, if you want to know how much it costs, the answer is you probably can't afford it. Ooh, I just lost tracking, so when the screen goes red, I've lost tracking, so I'm going to make sure that I scan a bit of the front of the table here, so that when I go, I'm gonna pull away a little bit. So as I go down, I don't end up losing tracking. And that actually worked out really well. We're gonna come back up. And I also think it is slowly starting to tilt on me, which is not good for scanning. Now I am going over this quite a bit more than I need to, but I'd rather have too much data than not enough. I think I ended up losing tracking there, so I think we do have to cut that. Wow, our error is 0.3. That's not bad actually look like it did a pretty decent scan. Now, I'm gonna do another one, but I'm gonna do geometry only. I'm not gonna have the scanner do texture. And you'll notice it's not gonna flash the light as much. And that's because the light is only really used to pick up textural details. All right, we've made some adjustments on our settings. We went ahead and we turned off texture capture, but we turned on real-time fusion. Real-time fusion does a lot of the heavy lifting while it is scanning. And yes, if you're wondering, that does mean it uses a lot more resources of the computer. Hilariously though, it's totally fine. It, it actually still works. It blows my mind that it actually still works. Now, the one thing I'm not putting on is the automatic base removal. It puts a checkerboard pattern on the base and it can really get in the way when you're trying to scan just visually of what you're trying to scan. So I'll remove it in post, you know. F it, we'll do it later. I'm gonna set this thing up so it's facing me. I'm going to turn off the first EVA scan. And now, woo, you're getting toasty. Now we're gonna do it one more time. And if you notice, instead of the main LED array flashing, it is just up here, which is its projector. That projector is projecting a certain pattern and the scanner is using cameras to pick up 
how that pattern interacts with the object. It's really bloody cool. All right, now I'm gonna try to go down a little bit to get some of the underside to at least give us a general idea. Unfortunately, we are probably not gonna get a very good scan of the underside of this part without doing a completely separate scan, which, I mean, is doable. Crap, I lost tracking. Damn. So what happened was it lost tracking halfway through. Well, you know, it actually did a half decent job, honestly. Oh, like Daft Punk one more time. Let's go. Now, ultimately, for, for what Trevor uses this for, the tines actually don't matter to him. He cares way more about the actual exterior of it and the way everything fits together. So if I can give him a reasonably clean model of everything, then it might be good enough for his purposes. Now, something like an Einscan HX would absolutely do a better job than this because an Einscan HX uses infrared, blue light, and a few other things. There are a lot of other brands out there that I think would have a better job with this scan than this particular scanner. So a lot of it is kind of picking the right technology for the right scan. Okay, we're gonna pull away a little bit, try to get some of the underside. Oh man, the whole thing is starting to lean. That's the other problem. I would normally use hot glue, but I said, oh, let's use blue tack. Blue tack should work fine. Blue tack did not work fine. <laughs> All right, looking at this data, honestly, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. <laughs> Got an error of two full friggin' millimeters. So we are gonna go ahead and turn on texture once again. I am gonna capture the raw HD data, which in this case, I can reconstruct it after the scan. So that will actually capture the raw data of the scan and I can just save the project and come back to it later and reconstruct it. It's actually a pretty cool process. So we're gonna go back to geometry and targets. Let's turn the HD density up to nine. I do want to reposition this. And of course, remember anywhere that I touch the part as I'm reorienting it, I have to go back and respray it because I've opened up an area that is a little bit shiny now and the scanner does not like that. I'm gonna amber a brand new bottle of this stuff. <laughs> My thought process here is we are not gonna get a perfect scan on this. So I need to focus on getting the detail that's gonna matter. And then the rest of it can be done in CAD. It's actually doing a phenomenal job on the front there. Wow. That is the one downfall of the EVA and why a lot of people get both the EVA and the spider from Artec is that the EVA requires you to be so much farther away. I really like that. And it says it's a two millimeter error. I don't understand, man. The raw data looks freaking phenomenal. Like, okay, yes, the, the times themselves don't look great, but we know where they're located. And I think that's really the big deal here. Unfortunately, it's not gonna give us a watertight model, but a lot of that is gonna be something that's gonna have to be done in post. So this has been a great learning experience for myself, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. To recap, a lot of the things that are wrong here is because of the model itself. One, it is black. It is matte black, it has a slight texture to it, and it's got really thin detail. It also has no flat surfaces, so there's no easy way for me to lean it on something or put it on something. And quite frankly, I don't want to put hot glue on it and I don't want to paint it. If I went and painted it like a matte gray, we would be fine. But we use some dry shampoo, which is the poor man's A-sub spray. Again, I want to test Dry shampoo versus a sub. So if anyone's got those connections, somebody tag them on social media. Huh? Huh? I think there's potential here. And I think the data that we got is adequate enough for what the needs are of the client. Remember, they're putting gauges inside of this. So they don't really care if the tines are where they need to be. In fact, they're blocking the whole darn thing. So if he could just fill it in flat and not worry about it, we'd be good. Now there's part of me that says, well, Grant, just put a bunch of tape over the front of it. And now that I'm saying that to myself, I should go find my blue tape. But there are scanners out there that would handle this perfectly fine. Blue light scanners or even infrared scanners that have high enough density. It's all about how many points per second that you can produce. The EVA is not that bad, but it's also not amazing in the grand scheme of high-end 3D scanning equipment. 
Of course, there's Creaform, Steinbickler, Mantis, Einscan, which is Shining 3D, and many, many other companies, especially ones that are coming out of China, that are producing scanners at a fraction of this cost that are supposed to meet or exceed what this scanner is able to do. We will be testing more scanners up against the EVA and really seeing where that price performance gap exists. And if it is in favor of something like an Artec EVA, or if it's more in favor of a budget option, we're gonna find out one way or another, but let me know down in those comments if you like 3D scanning, you wanna see more 3D scanning content, and two, how would you scan this? I wanna know, maybe I'm just doing something wrong and maybe we'll have to do a follow-up video. But that's all I have for you guys today, learning all about kind of the troubles of 3D scanning. But stay safe out there, don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep scanning awesome. Have a good one. <laughs> it's falling! Why? And it's still falling. And it's still falling. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters. Remember, if you wanna help out and support the channel, it is the best time of the month to do it, the first couple of days. You can do that by clicking those links down in that description down below. And at the $5 tier and higher, you get your name right next to me. I always forget which side it's on. I'm pretty sure it's over here. <laughs> But right below me is going to be the unboxing of the Artec EVA and the Artec Ray, my most expensive unboxing to date, 80,000 US dollars. And right next to that will be our video kind of doing a rough rundown of the market of 3D scanners as it stands. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.